Hi, and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's review for Better Call Saul Season 2, Episode 6, Bali High. This video is a part of a series of videos where I review episodes of Better Call Saul, so I'm going to have to give a spoiler warning for Better Call Saul up to Season 2, Episode 6. If you have not seen up to this episode, you may not want to watch this video, otherwise some things may be spoiled for you. So, I'll be honest, I'll have to say, in my opinion, uh, this is the slowest episode of Better Call Saul that the series has ever had. And this is a show that can be pretty slow at times. But don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that means this episode was bad. It wasn't by any means. It had all the elements that make Better Call Saul great, but in slow motion. So, we start the episode with the scene of seeing Saul and how he can't sleep, he tries to watch TV, but then sees the commercial that Davis and Maine ended up putting out, which I'm sure Jimmy feels is an abomination, uh, plus the fact that they're playing in the middle of the night and it's meant for old people in nursery homes. Really, what the fuck were they thinking? So that pisses Jimmy off, so he starts playing with those silly little ball thingies that came with the apartment that uh, Kim mentioned in the previous episode, but he still can't sleep. So he ends up driving back to his old place behind the salon, and he sleeps like a baby. The message here is very clear. Jimmy is uncomfortable in his new life and was much more comfortable in his old one. So then uh, we see Kim in her apartment and she has a bunch of messages on her answering machine and it's obvious it's from Jimmy and she's conflicted on whether or not to listen to them. She decides not to but then Jimmy calls again and she listens to the message as he makes it and it's just him singing a song which is his cute way of trying to win her back and it's obvious she hasn't talked to him since the falling out that they had but she smiles uh, when she listens to it so it's obvious he's winning her back but she's still a bit mad at him uh, as Chuck has made it clear that it was best for her career if she stayed away from him so Kim goes to work and she got her old position back but it's obvious that Hamlin is still mad at her uh, he pretends to be okay in front of the clients but it's all just an act so then we see Kim in court arguing a losing case uh, with the opposing lawyer you know the one arguing for the Rico case that we saw from the nursing home uh, in the previous season and he approaches her afterwards and offers her a job uh, he offers to pay off all of her debts and put her on the partner track uh, he also tries to make her feel like she's underappreciated at HHM however uh, she doesn't seem convinced I get the strong sense that she feels like to leave HHM to join the opposing firm would be a betrayal so then uh, we see Kim in her office uh, where her secretary comes in and tells her Howard wants her to get these files done but Kim says she was just about to go to lunch and her secretary says Howard wants them done within a couple of hours and suggests getting takeaways for lunch but Kim just leaves and goes to lunch anyway and that was fucking awesome I loved it uh, she's obviously sick of dealing with Hamlin's bullshit and the offer from the other firm has definitely got to her and got her a bit riled up uh, and it's got her questioning you know whether or not she should continue to put up with this garbage uh, because we see her while well, she's out to lunch aka drinking at a bar where she's looking at the card from the other law firm and is obviously considering whether or not to call them uh, when this guy starts hitting on her I kind of expected her to tell him uh, to fuck off but instead she goes along with it but as soon as she gave him a fake name when she introduced herself I knew she was going to try to con him I was kind of wondering how she would do this on her own but as it turns out, she wasn't planning on doing it on her own because uh, we cut to Jimmy where his chaperone is being really annoying and you can tell that Jimmy is getting really sick of it when Kim calls and invites him on the score and Jimmy absolutely cannot wait to play this guy. So he shows up pretending to be her brother and they con the hell out of him. 
So when we see them next, it's the morning after, as apparently doing cons really turns Kim on, so it seems like they're back together, but it turns out Kim doesn't actually intend on stealing that guy's money. Instead, she put the check up on her mirror as a memorabilia, so in other words, it wasn't about the money, it was about the thrill of doing it. So it seems she's once again questioning her lifestyle choice. And the thing I love though is that Kim realizes the only reason uh, that uh, Jimmy took the Davis main job was because of her and she's starting to realize that it was a bad thing as she can tell he isn't truly happy and the only time he was really happy was when he was hanging out in the pool conning people full time. But Jimmy tells her that he is happy in his job and she should be happy in hers, but it's obviously not the case. And then we end with the scene of Jimmy once again having issues with the cup holder in his car as his cup doesn't fit and finally he just rips the whole cup holder out and puts the cup in the hole that's left. And for me, this is a perfect metaphor for him becoming Saul Goodman. So. Now I'm convinced more than ever that he will become Saul Goodman by the end of the season. So let me tell you what I mean about the metaphor, because as you recall, at the start of the season when he was unhappy with his new lifestyle, he decided to go full Slipping Jimmy again, but eventually he realized he wasn't happy in that lifestyle either, so it takes the job with Davis and Maine, and now he's completely unhappy again. Like the cup uh, that doesn't fit in the holder, he's just not a good fit for the job, but instead of giving up with the cup altogether, he changes the holder and makes it fit. In other words, I think he's going to make a uh, being a lawyer fit with his Slipping Jimmy lifestyle, which those who've seen Breaking Bad already know this is exactly what he does do eventually. So I do think we're seeing the beginning of that. So now let me touch on the Mike story because this was pretty interesting as well as we see that Hector um, Salamanca is sending goons after Mike to get him to take the offer that will give Tuco a shorter sentence but possibly give Mike jail time. So Mike refuses um, but he, you know... Uh, these people won't simply take no for an answer, so he sets up all these traps in his front porch that let him know if there's someone in his house, and they work. So he goes and turns on the TV to let the invaders know he's home, to sort of set a trap for them, and he waits by with gun at the ready, and then he kicks the shit out of them, uh, which was awesome. It's absolutely great seeing Mike outsmart people. So these guys were just trying to scare Mike into taking the deal and he says try harder so that's exactly what they do so this next scene I saw coming from a million miles away and Mike's a smart guy so he should have seen this coming too but he didn't which I really don't buy but regardless we get to see Tuco's crazy badass cousins again as they show up uh, when Mike is with his granddaughter and clearly threaten her and the only thing I can say is, duh. <laughs> I mean, come on. So now Mike really knows he, he's in trouble, and uh, whatever he does, uh, I know it doesn't involve killing Tuco's cousins because they're still alive and breaking bad. So instead, he goes to talk to Hector. Uh, Nacho searches him at the door and tells Hector about the gun, but Hector lets him keep it. Mike agrees. Uh, to, you know, do this thing for Hector, but demands $50,000 and tells him he'd rather die right then and there than not take the deal. So Hector agrees. Now, my question is, what was Mike's plan if they did take the gun away from him? Which actually is a stronger possibility. So ultimately, this doesn't seem like a very good plan. So at the start of the episode, uh, they play Mike as a smart genius and, you know, he, he usually is in the show. But then this is twice that he's done stupid things. So I'm not sure they're quite getting the portrayal of Mike correct here. But anyway. At any rate, since Mike agreed to tell the police uh, Tuco's gun was actually his, that means that he will be in trouble with the law. So, you know what that means. He will need 
a lawyer. So here's my prediction. He'll turn to Jimmy. Jimmy will take the case, which will piss off Davis and Maine, but Jimmy will learn from doing that case that he much prefers protecting shady criminals than he does working for a boring law firm, and will quit Davis and Maine and make his own firm where he uh, defends low lives a la Saul Goodman. Uh, where Kim fits into this, I'm not sure. I'm now thinking it's possible that Kim might even join with him, uh, which would be interesting, uh, but we'll see. However, I like how Mike gave Nacho his money back because he failed to get rid of Tuco's problem, and I think uh, it's part of Mike realizing that he should have killed Tuco. Uh, you know how I was uh, said before that in Breaking Bad, Mike has no compunction about killing, and I think this is the start of him realizing that he needs to go all the way. No half measures, only full measures. I know this isn't the story he told Walt when he told him about the no half measures, but I think this is where he realizes he needed to live by that lesson and go full measures when necessary, so I don't think he'll be making that mistake in the future. So my rating for Bali Ha is, out of 10, is a 6 good. It was indeed a slow episode. I loved the scenes where Jimmy couldn't sleep. I loved the scene where Kim was approached by the other law firm. I loved the scene where Mike was setting his traps and when Mike uh, beat the crap out of those guys. And I loved the scene where Jimmy and Kim were conning the guy. But honestly, I would have loved all of those scenes a little more had they all been about two or three minutes shorter. Uh, you know, as good as they were, I just feel they were unnecessarily long and drawn out. That being said, still a good episode, not bad at all, but could have been better. Um, I was a bit skeptical about the way they portrayed Mike, and as much as I love the cup holder scene and the scene that shows that Jimmy couldn't sleep in his nice house, they're kind of just drilling into our heads these very obvious metaphors, which you know, I got like three episodes ago, so it does seem a bit repetitive, a bit overkill. That being said, I love the setup and I can't wait to see where they take it. So that's it for my review of Bally High. Uh, be sure to check back here every week uh, for a new review on Better Call Saul, and make sure to check out my channel for other videos on shows like Game of Thrones, Star Trek, The Walking Dead, Vikings, and more. And be sure to subscribe so you can keep up with all that. Thanks a lot for watching.